Let's go ahead and work on the texture for this foreground terrain. We'll dive inside the material library here into our terrain network. And instead of UV textures, we are going to use triplanar mapping for this foreground. So I'm going to put down a triplanar projection node. And I'm going to put our base colors into the X, Y, and Z parameter here. We're going to use this coastland rocks diffuse texture here. I'm going to copy and paste that. And put that into base color. We're going to plug in position and normal here as well. So I'm going to grab a material X position. and a material X normal. Now, before I do anything else, let's just do a quick render and see where we're at. Okay, so we see we have a texture applied here, uh, but the scale looks a bit off. So why don't we scale this? Well, if we go to the triplanar projection node here, there isn't a scale in here. But what we can do is we can multiply the position value by some number, and that will scale the texture for us. So we're going to put down a material x multiply, pipe that into there. And now we can scale this up or down. Not to zero, of course. But let's go in the positive direction, let's say 0 0.1, somewhere around there. And we'll have to play with this and see if we're seeing too much tiling or if this is just about right for our scene. Continue to play with this on your own until you find the values that work for you. We're going to duplicate this planar projection and we're going to use it to fill out the rest of our maps. So we'll go ahead and grab the roughness texture here. Make sure to get that in all three slots. And plug that into roughness. I'm going to grab the normals as well. That will go into our normal map, which we need to make. Plug that into normals. And if it looks a bit weak to you, you can always scale it up. We can take a look at that at a value of two, see if we like it a little better there. Getting to see a little bit more information and detail there. And now I want to add displacement to this. So let's go ahead and copy this. We'll find our displacement texture here. And we have a material X displacement. It should already be here. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at this. So we are not using vector displacement. We're using float displacement here. Uh, vector displacement and float displacement are different things. And you need to make sure that you have the, your signature set correctly here. And you also have the correct matching signature here. So we have color set. We need to change this to float. And we will pipe that right into displacement here. Now the value is pretty crazy. So why don't we bring that down to something like 0 0.2. 
All right, that's looking pretty good to me. We see that we're getting a little bit of penetration into the feet, but I think that's kind of natural for what we would want. It would make him look like he's kind of depressing into the ground just a teeny little bit. So I think that that's working pretty well. Now, one thing you may notice is that if you look at the texture map in a viewer here for this foreground texture, if you're using ACES, it's going to look quite a bit different. And that's because we are using a JPEG texture and it hasn't gone through any sort of ACES color workflow here. Uh, the good news is that Karma, at least in the CPU version of it, uh, has config configurations for OCIO transforms. So we'll go ahead and use that here. We need to connect our node in here. And I am going to go from the space utility. Uh, I'm looking for linear sRGB, and I would like to go into ACES CG and connect that in. And now when that updates, that's going to look quite a bit more like our base color map here. If you'll remember, this background mountain had a black and white mask that we had brought in as a color attribute. We're going to use that to duplicate this texture, apply it to the mountain, and then blend it into the texture that's already applied to the mountain. If you select the mesh and you scroll down a bit over here, you'll see that we do have a prim variable called display color. That's what we'll be using to go ahead and grab that texture. We're not going to change anything else other than the color map there. So I'm going to go back to our material library. I'm going to go into terrain and I'm going to copy this setup here. And I will paste that into our mountain one network here. And now we need to mix them together. So if I put down a mix node here, I'm going to have a foreground, and we might end up switching those depending on how our mask came in. And a background, currently it's set to a 0% mix. I'm going to plug in our base color here. And you can see that it has applied that color map here. So it looks almost like a nice seamless blending here, but we want our mountain back. So let's go ahead and bring in our display color. We can use geometry color here, or we can use a geometry property value in here. I'm going to use geometry color and it is a color. I'm going to plug that into our mix. And now you see that that color that we were using there, our display color has been used as a mask and it's doing a nice blend into the background. If you wanted to use the property, property value here, you would have to put the correct signature, which in this case is color. It tells you right here, it's a color three float and you have to tell it which property you want. So you would write display color, and that would do the same thing. And I can hook that up just to confirm that. All right, I think we're ready to tackle the atmosphere now.